Hey guys, welcome back. Today's video is episode three of the new layout build series. There is a lot to cover in this one, so let's get started. Today we will be building the rail to road aggregate transfer kit by Walthers. This kit was $45 and I did get it at Lombard Hobbies, as you may have seen in my last video. Here are the measurements of it if you do plan to get one yourself. As you can see, there are a lot of pieces, and a lot of which are repetitive. The first step, as always, is to spray paint. After taking a quick look, we do separate the sheets as needed, so all of it gets painted the right color. Here it is all separated and ready for paint. These are the ones that won't be painted, at least for now. Here are some of the decals that are included, except these are just construction paper ones. I decided to go with these colors since I'm going with modern times. Now we're outside to paint. I do know that the gray is a primer, but I couldn't find any shade in this matte finish, so I decided just to go ahead and use this one. Next up is the flat white. And yes, that is a lot of pieces. If I remember correctly, there are 128 in just these panel pieces alone. It's the following day and everything is dried, but I do want to show off a new cool accessory I've added to the layout. It's the 3D printed controller holder. I got a pack of two from eBay for about $15. Back to the kit build. The kit does include a small office and a small shack, which is pretty nice. That's what we'll be starting with first. Before getting started, I like to lay out all the tools I'll be using for the job. I'll be using the base for the office building, but not for the small shack. Here I am using a thin sanding file to get rid of those little nubs. Sometimes it is easier just to use the hobby knife. I did skip this since it's the easier part of this whole thing, but the rest will be shown in much better detail. They do need some touching up here and there with paint, but overall I'm pretty happy with how they look. The little shack is pretty cute, I must say. The easy part is done, and now it's time to take on the silos. I did decide to paint this one unlike the base for the office. I was trying to get a nice concrete look. All I used was these two paints back and forth from a distance till I was happy with the color. First up is the main silos, which are quite a pain from what I've heard, so we'll see. Then it's time to snip all the pieces from the sheets.
These will be the main base and foundation for the silos. The easier larger pieces are cut and prepped, so now it's time to make way for the 128 panels you saw earlier. Starting with sheet number 1 of 8. So after a couple of sheets of using the hobby knife, I switched on over to the snippers. These seemed to be a little bit easier and faster. The only downside was that there were more nubs after you were done cutting them. And just like that, we have two big piles, one for each silo. Here are those nubs I was just talking about, and there's just no way around not attending to them. So one by one, they all get trimmed off. Luckily, not all of them needed to be trimmed. After all that prep work, we can finally assemble it. The glue I'm using and always use is Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. I apply quite a bit to big pieces like this to make sure that nothing moves later down the line. Once I was done with the bottom part of the first silo, I did realize that there are two sizes of panels. The big one I'm holding is not used at all, which I didn't know at first. You can see here that I have one of the eight rings built and put on the base, and if you do use any of the larger pieces, it just won't fit. Just a heads up if you do pick up this Waller's kit yourself. Like I said, each silo has eight total rings that I'm making right here. One thing that is nice is that they do give you one extra full ring should you mess up on one on accident. Placing them on one another is pretty easy and pretty satisfying because the grooves inside line up perfectly. It is a tight squeeze, but I take my time so I do not break anything. After some time, we have one completely done besides the roof, of course. And now for number two. With all rings put together, we can stack them like pancakes. And just like that, we have two silos complete. Honestly, it wasn't that bad of a process, besides the fact that there were a lot of pieces. At this point it is the next day, but the night before I did tape off the gray parts and I repainted the white so the color is more consistent across all panels. Here are all the parts that won't be used at all. I guess I could use them to make other silos, I would just have to scratch build my own roof. So maybe we'll use them, we'll see. As I take off the tape, you may realize I have a little bit of overspray on the concrete but it could be lightly sanded off with some fine grit sandpaper. Before I put the tops on, I must remove these little tabs. They can just be bent back and forth to be taken off. Once that is done, I cut off any excess plastic.
Then I go ahead and glue on those roof tops. Moving on, we can now start with the detailing parts of the build. You will see that I sort of breeze through these next couple steps, but that's just because I do struggle a little bit with the tiny pieces. And plus, I don't want the video to be too long. Luckily, it's not too complicated to put together. Just very fragile pieces. This one section here was by far the toughest, because of how fragile the ladder and the safety cage around it was, plus not having that much space slash contact for gluing them together. But that completes one more sheet of parts. Those little parts and details really do sell the realism of this new building. I do have some minor touch-ups where you can see spots where I cut the pieces, but we'll get to those small little details eventually. So on the last sheet, I already cut out those handrails, which will stay matte gray, but the rest will be matte black. I don't know, I just felt like the conveyor belt should be black, so that's what I'm going with. The new industry will be going here. I will have to cut out some track to fit it in, but we'll get to there in a moment. While the paint is drying on that last sheet of parts, I would like to give an overview of the layout, and also one major change I'll be doing to a small part of it. That change is going to be removing this switch here, and obviously the spur that goes along with it. The reason for doing that is because I am worried about having any issues with this turnout later on, and I don't want to have any issues with anything on the main line. There's nothing wrong with it now, but I am paranoid of how it will be later on. So here it is all completely removed, and I do have to say it does look much cleaner. Another plus side of doing this is that I have now more room for more scenery stuff. I'm not sure what I'm going to do exactly at this point, but we'll figure it out as we go along. Anyway, back to completing this kit. So now the conveyor belt is done, I just need to respray it since some of the pieces were backwards on the sheet. And here are the extra parts as well. I swear I'm not missing anything because I double checked the instructions many times. I guess you just get a lot of extra pieces. Now we can place the kit on the layout and kind of get an idea of how much track needs to be trimmed off. Once I'm happy with the placement, I mark where I need to cut. As always, the Dremel is my tool of choice. To get the track up without destroying it, I just get my ruler under the track a little bit to kind of slide it off the phone. Tacky glue is strong, but if you need to remove anything, it doesn't destroy the area it's in. Now I mark where I need to cut the next section of track, and this will be where the sand gets dumped. If you are gentle enough, you can easily peel the tacky glue off the track so it can be reused. Next up is to figure out how many railroad ties need to be removed. With a little bit of pressure, you can use the hobby knife to cut the ties off. I do struggle a little bit with sliding the two ties back on, but I eventually get them on there. You can see how the track now goes over the base of the kit itself. Luckily they do make it to where the track goes perfectly with the kit, and there is no need for shimming anything up. It will just need to be glued and weighed down. There is a piece that goes underground, or in this case in the foam, which is no issue because I have 2 inch thick foam to work with. 
The part itself goes under here. I roughly mark with a pencil what size hole I need to make to fit that underground piece. Then I cut the foam with a blade to make sure pulling out that section is a little bit easier. And when I said pulling out, I literally meant pulling out the foam. And I use a pair of needle nose pliers to do so. After taking out that foam, we can set the piece inside and you can see now it's completely flat with the top of the layout. A layer of tacky glue goes around it since the base of the kit does bow a little, so this will keep it down. The kit's now in place and I'm also going to put a little bit of glue down where the track will be since I'm going to weigh it all down at one time. After double checking it's all straight, it's ready to be weighed down. Pretty much every corner bowed up, so that's why there's a lot of stuff around it. All that is left are the final pieces that can now be added. First are the grates that the sand goes through. Then those fragile handrails. And finally, the conveyor belt. Now it's complete. Also, do ignore that big block of glue in the corner. You won't see it once we scenic the area. Man, I am really happy with how this turned out, although it was a lot more work than your average kit build, but I think it did pay off in the end. Now it's finally time to run some trains and test out that new industry. This time I'm going to be using my GP40-2.
I'm not sure exactly how operations are going to work yet, but here I'm dropping an empty in track 1 to shove a full car over the conveyor belt. So we are coming to the end. Uh, this is by far the longest video that I have recorded to date. I hope you guys enjoy these longer videos. Uh, I can't remember if I mentioned it or not in the previous one, but after covering the track work and the wiring, I do want to slow down a little bit when it comes to scenery, just because this is my favorite part of building the layout. And I hope you guys enjoy that. If you guys do want to have longer videos, let me know in the comments below. So that's pretty much how we're going to be doing things from here on out, is I'm just going to be covering as much as I can when I do scenery. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, please do leave a like rating if you did, and subscribe if you haven't. Anyways, thank you guys again for watching the video, and I will see you in the next one.